Thank you for coming to our session on how to stop the bullying cycle. What new technology can do to help you address the bullying problem. I'm Michael Lissack, Executive Director of the Institute for the Study of Coherence and Emergence. And our efforts over the past 18 months have focused on developing new technology to help you, students and parents, address bullying. Jonathan Fass' book, Beyond Bullying, highlights the traditional approaches to the bullying problem. These have focused on getting bystanders to intervene and having all of us approach the frustrations that the bully experiences with compassion and understanding. But it's not clear that that's enough. A new study, which came out in May from the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, entitled Preventing Bullying, through science, policy, and practice, suggests that we might need to re-examine the traditional approach. This study looks at the extent of bullying, its definitions, its kinds, and then it goes to two very important ideas. One, the importance of group context, and two, how one might go about breaking what it refers to as the bullying cycle. This quote from the report highlights one victim's perspective of what it's like to be bullied. More importantly, though, is the data in the report. If you look at its measures of the extent of bullying, you can see that in sixth grade, almost 28% of students reported bullying incidents on school property, a percentage that cuts in half by the time they reach 12th grade while cyberbullying seems to stay steady in the 6 to 8% range. But what's most important is what's not on this chart. Bullying does not stop at school grounds. There exists a large extent of bullying not captured here, the bullying that happens after school and away from school property. How do we go about defining bullying? The report says bullying is any unwanted aggressive behavior by another with observed or perceived power imbalances that repeats. I want to stress power imbalances that repeat. This will be very important. Bullying may inflict harm or distress on the targeted youth, including physical, psychological, social, or educated harm. And our goal is to stop that harm and to stop the distress. How does it happen? The report highlights a number of kinds of bullying. The biggest categories are making fun of people, calling them names, making them subject to rumors. But there are far more disturbing kinds of bullying. There are those who've been threatened with harm, who get pushed, tripped, spat upon, whose property gets taken, or who get made or attempted to make to do things they don't want to do. These kinds of bullying can cause real and immediate harm. To understand that harm, it's important again to look at context. Bullying happens in a group. Bullies want witnesses. What they're trying to do is have an elevated status among those they consider to be their peers. So to do that, you need spectators. Witnesses are present in about 85% of bullying episodes. If you look at the group, while at the center is the poor student being bullied, he or she is surrounded by the bully and his or her followers. And then we get to the folks that traditional approaches focus on, the passive supporters and onlookers, as well as the possible defenders. The traditional approach tries to encourage the group shown in green to intervene. But the new approach suggests we need to look at something quite different. The new approach focuses on what it calls the bullying cycle, the idea that people who are bullied end up often becoming bullies themselves. The way the cycle works is we start with the bully. The bully is feeling some form of anxiety or social isolation. Those feelings lead to increased vulnerability and finally a need to act out. The bullying is the form of that acting out. Now, what happens to the poor victim? On the receiving end of bullying behavior, now they feel increased anxiety and social isolation. They too feel increased vulnerability. 
the pattern may continue to repeat, if not immediately, but over time. Youth who are bullied often end up as adults who do bullying. So our goal is to see if we can break the bullying cycle. As I mentioned, those who get bullied during childhood are the same people who tend to have major problems in adulthood. Some of that problem echoes itself in bullying behavior. It turns out that individuals who both bully others and who themselves have been bullied are those who are at greatest risk. Thus, it's critical that we find a means of breaking this bullying cycle. How do we do this? The key is looking at power imbalances. Bullies exercise power over victims. Victims feel helpless, and it is that feeling of helplessness that leads to the anxiety and vulnerabilities that then trigger further bullying behavior. So the key is to give the victim some form of empowerment. Give them a way so that they do not feel helpless when faced with the aggressor. Most anti-bullying efforts rely heavily on bystanders to take action, leaving your child with no protection. The No app aims to change that. Now your child can summon the assistance of a policewoman to tell the bully no, and you get alerted in real time with a map of your child's location. With video evidence, the bully's parents can be confronted, and school officials will be motivated to take action. You get increased peace of mind, and your child gets increased self-confidence. So what is this new technology, the No app? The No app is designed to empower the victim. Rather than looking to bystanders, the No app is designed to give the victim a sense that he or she has some control over the situation. The No app empowers parents. It does this by giving them a real-time alert whenever their child activates the app. Alerts show a map and arrive by both email and SMS. The No app encourages reporting. It does this because it creates an evidentiary record. With that record, people are not just dependent upon the victim's word. They know that something serious happened. In turn, that evidentiary record motivates schools. They know that it's no longer he said, he said, she said, she said, but there exists evidence, which is a motivator for them to intervene. And in turn, that deters aggressors. Because when the aggressor knows that there exists evidence, that there's something that the victim can do, well, the aggressor has to think twice. And that's true not just with bullies, but also with perps and with strangers. It's out of control right now. Each day, 160,000 students in the United States stay home for fear of being bullied. But a new app is now looking to combat the problem and keep parents in the loop. Channel 3's Kara Sunlin has an important story tonight the whole family won't want to miss. We've got something that actually can empower their child. A new app aims to stop bullies in their tracks and keep parents aware of any problems their kids are facing in real time. This is something for the kid getting bullied. He or she has something in their pocket that they can do. It's called the No app, and it works like this. When a child encounters a bully, they open the app, push start, and point the front of the phone at them. The camera records the bully as they watch a video of a police officer telling them to stop. What is it about the word no that you do not understand? The video is sent to a parent or trusted adult. They also get a text with GPS coordinates of where the incident happened. Being able to create apps that um, have the potential to help intervene is going to be tremendous. We talk to students who are leaders in bullying prevention in their schools to get their take. I think that's a great idea because that will help you like show your parent like what's really going on. Parents can use the uploaded video as evidence so schools can help control bullying situations. Most bullying stops when it's reported and somebody intervenes. But 65% of the time, nobody reports it. Kara Sandlin, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Designing and launching the No app is not enough. If we're going to make progress against bullying, we need evidence of success. We're going to be distributing the No app to school districts throughout the country over the next school year. And we need evidence from those school districts so that we can prove that the No app works. This cannot happen without your support. Please encourage your school, encourage your parents, encourage your students to download and make use of the No app. Join us in the campaign to end America's bullying epidemic.
We are the No App, the only tool designed to help break the bullying cycle, the only tool designed to empower victims and their parents. Thank you.